Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve salam Seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. A lot of people do not know what to do on the night of their marriage. Brothers or sisters. And they get deceived by wrong information. Be it pornography, be it what they see in movies, be it from friends who tell them do this and do that. And they do not understand the correct methodology. And do not understand the importance of that night. This is the most special night in your life when it comes to your spouse, yourself, your family. This is the night where it all begins, the union happens, where Adam and Eve meet, basically. This is what it is. And a lot of people do not understand the importance of it and spoil it, break it, destroy it. It just cause a problem. Why? Again, the, the, the problem is, again, ignorance. Ignorance is the problem of our ummah these days. I mean, we have a lot of courses that tell us how to pray, how to, you know, siyam and zakah and so on. Mashallah, you know, there's, there's a lot that happens these days. However, we do not have so many premarital courses. There are some now happening, alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair to the brothers who are spending time trying to address some of these issues. I will not name their, I will not name them necessarily right now. But I don't like people to the thing that I'm endorsing some someone and them they might be. Anyway, there are some people you can find, inshallah, that talk about some of these issues and give training because it's so important the imams have to do more even using social media you have millions of followers use social media to help people and some are doing alhamdulillah but we need more my argument is we just need so much more because this is the most single important night in your life as a man or as a woman when you get together when adam meets eve when you consummate your marriage when you make love for the first time some of you losing their virginity it is the most important sadly go spoiled this is the night that will set the pace for the rest of your life this is the night where you make it or break it and again who has the responsibility first and foremost is not, not the only one but it's again the man you know guys like to keep saying that we are in charge we are the ones you know women should respect us women should do this women women no doubt yes but then we need to step up on every single level. And this is a huge responsibility that we have as men. We are the one, ones who set the pace. We are the ones who lead. We are the imams. So, I'm not going to go into the authenticity of all the things, but one of the things that's reported that a husband and wife should do when they get married <coughs> is that you know they, they will do certain things before the consummation not just jumping into it they have to do certain things that are as per the sunnah of the Prophet again um, one of the things is of course to pray together pray you know some nawafil some you know pray isha together مثلاً, before the night you know starts and uh, make dua ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you uh, give your wife something sweet maybe like you know uh, there's some reports that also will get, get milk or something or something sweet it's from the sunnah uh, speak laugh a bit joke talk uh, cuddle maybe get close hold hands the first time guys you know for a lot of the women specifically which are much more shy than the men is the first exposure the first uh, you know and for men as well sometimes right we're talking about uh, men who are or women who are virgins I'm going to address that first but even if they're not virgin it's the first time the two of them will get together so holding hands um, just soft touches just talking just taking it easy what happens is sadly and there's so many reports that have come through me so many over the years people have complained that usually mostly the men but sometimes the woman they just jump into it like just like an animal and just try to push their way through 
and it ends up literally being a forced, you know, <laughs> a forced act. And you have to understand the the feeling, the emotion of, of the woman and the man, sometimes the man, on that night is just such, not just special, but it's, it's, there's a lot of emotions, there's a lot of fear even, there's a lot of anxiety that can, can take place. And if that anxiety is associated now with an act that is, has a negative experience, being forceful, pushing yourself, being harsh, um, not listening to what the other side is saying, th then basically you're, you're laying the foundation for the rest of your life, for how your relationship and your intimacy is going to be for the rest of the life. So guys come to me, I'll just tell you there's a few messages that I receive on a regular basis. So right now, just recently, a couple of days ago, a guy said that my wife can't even look me in the eyes. And I said, why? He said, because in the night of, mar a night of marriage, I just forced myself on her. And she said, no, I'm not, you know, she was a bit shy and I forced myself in her and pushed her and was rough with her. And she can't even look me in the eyes after years. Imagine that. This is not the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu This is not how the Prophet Sallallahu would consummate marriage. This is not how the Prophet Sallallahu would treat his wives, that he would force himself onto them. No. The wives of the Prophet would wait for him to visit them. They would wait for him uh, and compete even for him وسلم, to, to go to them. And that's what you want. You want your wife to wait for you, to desire you, to want you to, to, to be with her. Not to not want to look you in the eyes, subhanAllah. So, the night of marriage, after you've done the nikah, after, and this is sunnah to consummate on the same night as the nikah. If you cannot, yani, alhamdulillah, it's sunnah, yani, it's not fard. So, some people live away, some people there's issues, sometimes, sadly, there's cultural problems where, you know, family says, no, you have to have like ruksati or this and that and so many things and days and maybe years, sometimes they want you to stay apart even though you're in the same city or in the same place. Uh, these things cause fitna and cause problems. I do not advise them. We respect the culture, but you should not put the youth and the newlyweds into fitna uh, to cause them to, you know, and, and there's this time. If you don't consummate the marriage, the bond is not built yet. I told you even in the previous series with regards to intimacy that making love is what builds the bond between the two. It's the connection, the spiritual connection of husband and wife. Adam meets Eve, literally. Right? So if that doesn't take place and that's not built, and that is why the Sunnah of the Prophet is that the virgin gets like seven days. It's like literally like a honey week. We don't have a honeymoon in Islam, but it's like a honey week. The virgin gets seven days to be together too. Why? To make love. You know, people think that, you know, making love in excess is bad in Islam and, you know, shouldn't indulge in it and something haram and Islam. I'll, I'll refute that in a second. The Prophet said, I will take pride of you in your numbers on the Day of Judgment. Have children, basically. Didn't the Prophet said that? We know the hadith. It's famous hadith about the multitude of the ummah. He said, I will take pride. Have children. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, the woman, the best woman is the one, the, the, the loving and the one that is, can carry children. So what is this talk? People tell me, oh, no, you cannot indulge in making love too much because it can cause, you know, in, overindulgence and overindulgence. Like, you know, one sheikh compared it to food. It's not food, man. How would it be like, what, a, what an insult to have, like, the example of food when it comes to love. It's an insult. This is love. This is making love. This is intimacy. This is the, the act that brings a man and a woman together. So when the Prophet said, I will be proud of your numbers. How do you think you're going to get numbers, man? Except by making a lot of love and making a lot of children. People say, yeah, but you should have that. Just focus on what the Prophet said. This is not some kind of like debate or this or yeah, but that. No. The Prophet said the same thing. You want to have children or not? It's up to you. But of course, and you're not going to get a child every time you make love, you know, but, you know, obviously this would mean that you'd have to have a lot of love and make a lot of love and there's nothing wrong with making a lot, a lot of love. There's, not there's that, the Prophet said there's ajr. So you want to get more ajr, isn't it? So let's understand things from the proper perspective. Making love in Islam is encouraged because that relationship 
flourishes. When a woman and men are so comfortable with each other and making love and being together and loving each other, this is the most beautiful. Their relationship will be healthy. When people stay away from each other, three, four, five, a week, two weeks sometimes, you find that they pick on the smallest thing to fight about and argue about, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, so the night of the marriage, let's focus now. The night of the marriage is very important. And forget about culture, forget about these things. People should follow the sunnah, okay? Nikah, don't make, you know, these big parties and too much, you know, things and everyone gets tired and then it's 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Just had a case where, you know, the guy was waiting for his wife and the wife's taking picture with everyone. It's 3 a.m. And then they go to the hotel room and he couldn't perform. And it's the first night. It was a big and it was an insult. And uh, the woman went and complained to her mother that he couldn't have sleep with me. And oh my God. But it was like 3 a.m. She's taking pictures with everyone. It's like, the guy's tired, man. By 3 a.m. you've been entertaining guests and this and that. Make it easy. Make it easy. The most important thing for you is you and her. Not to take pictures, first of all, with all kinds of people which might be uh, problematic. Most important thing on that night is not about the hall and about the dress, even though you can have, but it's about you and her, about her and you. This is the most important thing. Keep things simple. K-I-S-S, keep it simple, sunnah. Okay, and sunnah, keep it simple and sunnah. That's it. K-I-S-S, kiss. Keep it simple and sunnah. That's what I advise people for marriage. So, go home. Nice hotel. Beautiful place. Candles. Rose petals. No problem. This is not from Dean or something that, oh, it's imitating the kafir. Just, it's about love and, you know, make a nice, you know, get a nice jacuzzi. Put the, uh, the, the, you know, juice and milk and some sweets and nice ambiance uh, candles nice smell bakhur okay i love bakhur uh, maybe a bubble bath a jacuzzi whatever it is a beautiful bed big bed and just pray together make dua hold hands talk talk yes talk uh, relax flirt smile look at each other giggle jingle um, you know joke with each other you don't have to jump into it. You have the whole night. And of course, you got to prepare yourself from before. Yeah, make sure, guys, you're in shape. I remember I told you in the previous series, you got to be in shape, man. You know, go two months before. Start training. Start, you know, if you haven't, you should be always. But hey, if you haven't, you, there's always a good time to start. So if you know you're getting married, train. Start changing your diet. Start losing your belly. Start lifting heavy so you can get some testosterone. So you can be strong on the day. And maintain after, of course. Uh, yeah, like train, get ready, right? And sleep the night before properly, get rest so you can be strong. Um, you know, uh, eat a banana, don't drink too much coffee, okay? Don't drink too much coffee, be careful with that. A little bit of chocolate is very good, dark chocolate is very good, okay? Don't eat too many berries and too many things, just, and don't eat too much food on your wedding night. That's another thing, because it does slow down your libido, your power, okay? So just be with her, talk to her, joke with her, don't rush, don't push, be rested, be relaxed, make sure you guys are not anxious, because if you are, she's scared, and you might be also a bit uh, anxious, that's going to affect performance, you want to make sure that that act of intimacy, that making love on that night is the best feeling ever, and it's the best, and you both culminate, you both climax in the best way, so that can set the precedence for the rest of your life and your relation, okay? So take it easy, and when you're ready, slowly. Undress slowly, as the Prophet said. Uh, words and kisses, messengers, for 